Hello and welcome to The Quiet Time. My name is William Hayes. I'm the minister of Mount Mellick and Tullamore Presbyterian Churches right in the heart of Ireland and Counties Leash and Offaly. This is a, a little bit of time of reflection, a little bit of time of prayer, a little bit of time of reading Mark's Gospel throughout Lent and um, hopefully a little bit of time whenever we can stop for a moment to pray with God, to meet with him and to rest in his presence. I hope you're able to take these few minutes to yourself, pop in some headphones or play this loud and uh, enjoy the, the time that you get with this. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many ways in which you provide for us. Lord, we thank you for the life that you give to us. We thank you for the, the different types of joy that there are in that life. Lord God, we thank you for the, the way in which you give to us again and again. The food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, the water that we drink, the company that there is, friendship, loved ones, your church. We thank you for all of these things. And we thank you that again and again you provide in so many different and often very surprising ways. Lord God, you give us such abundance in so many things that we are able to go and share those with others. But we confess, Lord, that we don't often do that. Sometimes we are greedy and we hoard what we have. Sometimes, Lord, we don't trust in your provision. And therefore we try to acquire and acquire. And sometimes, Lord, we, we choose not to, to give or not to help with the, the things that you've given us. Lord God, you give us time and we refuse to share it. Lord, you give us money and we refuse to share it. Lord, you give us love and compassion and forgiveness and we refuse to share those. And in this way, we have sinned against you and against others in thought and word and action. Lord Jesus, you gave up a whole human lifetime in order to be with us, to live as one of us. And Lord, you died and you descended to the dead in order that you might die with our sin and carry our sin with you. And on the cross, you paid the price for all of our sin. Lord, we held back but you paid in your suffering and paid everything in full. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you that whenever we come to you and we confess our sins, you generously forgive, you generously reach out, and you generously restore us. Lord, we pray that today we would know and understand your grace. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear from God's word from Mark's Gospel. This is Mark chapter 8 and it's two little stories. It's a, again another feeding story and um, a little bit of a almost kind of comical encounter between Jesus and the disciples. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They've already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to, enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 were present. After he had sent them away, he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. Then he left them, got back into the boat and crossed to the other side. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them, 
Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and not of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, It's because we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? One of the, the great joys that there is in being a parent is the ability to, to go along to your children and say to them again and again and again and again and again to do a particular job and, and still have them turn around and say, did you tell me to do that? Sometimes you you feel that you've got to you know repeat the same things over and over and over again. And sometimes, sometimes things go in, so they do. Please tidy your room, please tidy your room, please tidy your room, please tidy your room, so on and so forth. I wonder, did Jesus feel a lot like that with his disciples? Whenever he is talking here to them, he has already been with them whenever they have fed the 5,000. And here we have uh, a crowd of a similar kind of size meeting together. And Jesus says to his disciples, come on, we've got to go and feed these guys. And the disciples, as if the feeding the 5,000 hasn't happened already, go, well, I don't, I don't know. How are we going to do this? Where in this remote place can anyone, can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. And you can almost kind of see an eyebrow being raised at this point, can't you? You know, how many loaves do you have? Come on. Keep the program, guys. Let's see. You know, do you understand what's what's going on here? No, the, the disciples still don't get it. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground when he'd taken the, the seven loaves and given thanks. He broke them and gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. And they did so. And the same thing happens as happens with the, the feeding of the 5,000. We can we can stop and we can mock these disciples, especially whenever you get to all this stuff later on, whenever Jesus is warning them about the Pharisees and their continual demands for signs, even though they've just witnessed and, and seen this huge miraculous feeding event going on. You know, we can we can look down on the disciples and we can say, you know, oh my goodness, you know, could they not learn? You know, did they not realise? Did they not understand? And yet time and time again, Jesus says the same things to us. He says, I love you. And inside, do we process that? Do we really understand that? He says, I forgive you. And inside, do we process that? Do we really understand that? He says, love your enemies. And inside, do we process that or do we really really understand what's going on there. He says to share. He says to give. He says to trust him with all that we have and all that we are. And inside, do we ever get that? Do we ever really understand? And so maybe it's to us that he says at the end of this little section in verse 21, he says, he said to them, do you still not understand? So I think we're allowed to laugh at the disciples at this point. It is funny. It is a bit silly, them busy discussing about not having enough bread whenever Jesus is trying to warn them about the yeast of the Pharisees and Herod and all the different kind of religious leaders like that who just don't seem to get the message. So we're, we're allowed to laugh a little bit. But really, inside, we're, we're just like them. We're just as slow. We're just as hard of hearing and hard of heart and sometimes hard of understanding. And so he says to us, just as he says to them, you know, I love you. Do you still not understand? 
I forgive you. Do you still not understand? I am your creator and provider. Do you still not understand? And so we turn to ourselves and we say, come on heart, you can do this. Come on mind, you can grasp this. Come on, do you still not understand? Let us pray. Lord God, help us to to truly grasp who you are. Lord, so often we just don't get it. Time and time again in the past you have helped us and then we worry if you'll help us again. Time and time again in the past you've been with us right in the midst of difficulties and hardship and hurt and pain. And Lord, we wonder, will you do that again? Lord, you gave us life and we wonder if you could ever give us a new life after we die. Lord, you provide, and Lord, we fail to trust in you again and again. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give us understanding. Help us to learn to trust you. Help us to to grow into the love that you have for us. And help us to be your children who not only hear your word, but follow it and do what it says. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So thank you for joining with us today. Thanks for sharing and for taking part. And uh, I pray that you have a really blessed day. God bless you. Goodbye.